I always feel my ancestors out in this field with me. I still can hear songs like, stay in the field, oh, stay in the field, stay in the field until the war has ended. On a quiet chain of islands off the South Carolina and Georgia coast is an almost forgotten community called the Gullah or Geechee people. More than anywhere else in America, they've held on to traditions their ancestors brought from Africa. They've stayed on the isolated former plantation land where those ancestors were once enslaved and developed a culture and language known as Gullah. seems pretty isolated back here. Oh, see, now that's what we call insulated. Yeah, so we insulated. feel like we're insulated and mm -hmm. kind of kept warmed and keep our culture alive away from the mainland culture. So sure, if you went just across a couple bridges and you ended up on the mainland, you'll hear people speaking like this. And then you come across onto these and hundred of yeti people are cracking teeth like this all day long and things like that. And they say, huh? Marquetta Goodwine, also known as Queen Quet, still lives on the land where her great-great-grandfather was enslaved five generations ago. We have okra, we plant peanuts, cantaloupe, watermelon, the same things that my great-great-grandfather planted here. And he was the person that actually obtained this land in 1862. So my family has continuously owned it legally since then, but he was actually enslaved here. Hundreds of plantations ran down the South Carolina and Georgia coast in an area known as the Sea Islands. After the Civil War broke out, the islands were abandoned by the plantation owners, and thousands of people were eventually able to buy the land they were once enslaved on. But today, the landscape is changing. Folks come in with bulldozers, and the first thing we see is they want to dig up what we've already had for all these generations, and then they want to build something that's antithetical to our culture. Golf courses, resorts, and condos have replaced Gullah communities. Hilton Head Island was the first to be developed. Once home to about 300 Gullah families, the 42-square-mile island is now home to 26 golf courses, brings in 2 million tourists a year, and is considered one of the top vacation destinations in the United States. Gullah burial grounds dating back to the days of slavery are now the backyards of million dollar condos in opulent gated communities that new locals fondly call plantations. That development boom is slowly spreading to other areas nearby. You can hear right now construction in the distance, yep. something else being built. Yep. One of the things that you'll notice that you'll never see outside of Gullah Geechee homes usually are signs like that, no trespassing. Well, that's part of the interesting thing is that the land that the Gullah Geechees own, it's all communally owned. Absolutely, yeah. Most people live on what is in the law called heirs' property. And that's because our ancestors during the U.S. Civil War now bought property. And so Gullah Geechees became the first group of people of African descent in North America to own land in mass. Gullah landowners sought to own the land communally among their extended family. Over generations, this communally owned land was passed down to hundreds of heirs, often without legal documents like wills or clear titles. An informal shared ownership system developed, which came to be known as heirs' property. Until recently, heirs' property arrangements kept family properties from being sold because families depended on the land and each other. But today, developers are using legal loopholes to acquire heirs' property, sometimes for pennies on the dollar, whether the people living there want to sell or not. We visited Willie Hayward, a local attorney who helps Gullah families protect their property. When the ancestors acquired it, this was not uh, a very desirable place to live because of the lack of air conditioning, uh, mosquitoes, uh, alligators. 
uh, and lack of uh, access, lack of bridges and so on and so forth and roads. But now that it's changed, so that progress, for lack of a better word, uh, has brought in uh, folks who now uh, want to divest Gullah Geechee people of that land uh, for uh, development purposes. What's the extent of the threat right now to the actual land? I mean, how much land are we talking about having been lost in the past few years? Areas that I see that, in my opinion, that were 90% above Gullah Geechee folks that are now less than 10, uh, if that. One of the interesting things that we picked up on is that, you know, just one owner who owns one small part of it can kind of force the entire thing to be sold. How does that even work? The law allows that. It allows just simply, all you have to do is allege uh, that you have an interest. That interest may be one hundredth of a percent. Ayers' properties are divided into shares, with each family member holding a certain portion of ownership. The law allows anyone owning part of an Ayers' property to force the other owners to sell the entire property by going to a judge and asking for their dollar value of their share. Technically, other heirs who want to keep the land could buy out their share. But in reality, few have the means to purchase that share on the open market. It's just too expensive. And because there are so many owners, the land often can't be subdivided. The only practical solution is to sell the land at a court auction or just go along with development. What's unique about the Gullah Geechee people, we have more ears outside of South Carolina. In many cases, these ears have lost contact with South Carolina, never been to South Carolina, don't know anything about South Carolina. But uh, legally, they have an interest in that property. In the end, Gullah people are forced off the land they own to make way for resort communities they can't afford to live in. Adolph Brown is a real estate broker on Hilton Head Island. Here's um, a piece right now. As you see, there's a for sale sign. Yeah. This is all there. You can almost tell it by um, the mobile homes. Like you'll see, uh, you know, a bunch of mobile homes, you know, together. That's a good indication that you're on a track of land that's Ayers property. He showed us a piece of Ayers property he's planning to develop. Some distant relatives who live out of state recently decided they wanted to work with Adolf to develop the land forcing the sale of the entire property and displacing relatives who live there. Some of the people don't want to sell, obvious, because they, they lived here their whole lives. You can see there's a lot of mobile homes. So there are 19 in total that, you know, there's going to be an issue with. And so, you know, what do we do? What do, they, what do they do? Their only option would be to buy those relatives out. But they don't have the means to do so. Waterfront property here can go for $800,000 an acre. Adolph moved to Hilton Head from New York 10 years ago when he discovered he owned shares of an heir's property. Some of the work you've done, it's kind of got you a bad rep on the island right now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it has, it has. The island, a lot of the islanders think I'm the, I'm the bad guy, I'm the, 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 the city slicker bamboozler dude, you know what I mean? People here feel like their, their entire culture is being sold along with this property that the Gullah culture is, is basically fading away as more developers buy up these, these lands through the heirs' property. Right. I mean, well, do, you, do you understand that anger? I understand the anger, and I understand the Gullah culture. My grandmother was a midwife on Hilton Head, so almost every African-American uh, that was born from in the 60s, 50s, 40s, she brought them into the world. The, the problem comes in when the world changes. My family doesn't barter with food. They go to regular jobs and have nine to fives and they've gone to college and they work at Fortune 500 companies now. So it's kind of, I mean, you can see the division. Like, I'm sure there are people who think of this as like, like a boon, just like they won the lottery almost. And there's others who think of it as, I am losing my way of life, I'm losing my home. Right, I'm losing. And trying to rectify those two situations. I mean, what solution can you come up with? The only solution I've ever seen is to develop it. And I give people this analogy of the American Indians that were, you know, downtown Wall Street. They had the teepees there, they had the little communities. Could you imagine today there being 20 acres that's uh, Indian Reserve in Wall Street? Yeah, but that it, was, it can't happen. That was hundreds of years ago. What I'm saying is either you have to be progressive or it will, you, you will get run over, taxed out, moved out. It, it, eventually it will happen. Up the coast, 
the once quiet community of Mount Pleasant recently became the ninth fastest growing city in the country. The Phillips community, settled by former slaves of the Phillips Plantation, is one of two Gullah communities left there. So we're in Phillips community right now, which is a, a Gullah community uh, right outside of Charleston. And this kind of used to be a really isolated area, but now basically what you have is all these developments that have sprung up around it. So it's kind of like a donut hole. So it's only really a question of time, how much longer the people here can hold out before they're either priced out or their homes are bought out from underneath them. Lawrence Palmer has spent his whole life here. When I was growing up, it was a close-knit community. Someone got a house to be built. Everybody joined in and helped that person build that house. Don't have to pay a dime. And time to come around to you, or the community get together and do the same thing to you. And now it seems like a lot of people are trying to get this property right here. Oh, yeah. They are moving in very swiftly. And are people trying to actively get your land right now? Are they trying to buy your lands? Oh, yeah. They tried to buy my property uh, several times. I told them, no, it's not for sale. When I should die, I hope that some of the family member would step up and uh, try to keep it for the future generation. This community was one big family, but now the community is far divided. Everybody is uh, more like an individual. Number one, looking out for number one. The heck was the rest. As the push to sell keeps on building, the Gullah are running out of options. If we look at the situation on the Fusty Allen right now, a lot of the native people are gone. The few pockets of, of Gullah Geechee on St. Simon is drying up like the water of California today. It's all but non-existent. How can we stop this? We don't really have a community or I, I guess we have maybe a few neighborhoods, but not a real community. And I think we need to develop them. And that's one way to stop people from encroaching on your land. We need to meet with each other. We don't, we want to meet right after the funeral when emotions are out of control. There's a serious erosion of trust too within the black community. Mm -hmm. Without trust, we can't, we definitely can't be unified. I mean, in my family, we lost a lot of land. But, but the thing of it is, is like I started something new. I started buying land and I want it because I know the importance of land and I want to keep it in the family. I want to keep it going. This is something that we all need to take with us and to explore ways in which we can do that. And one of the ways that we may have to do this is the African spirit. And I see whether or not the African spirit can come and bring some knowledge or wisdom into this problem that we are having as a culture and as a, as a people. In addition to these community meetings, the Gullah turned to traditions rooted in those their ancestors brought here more than 200 years ago. Gracious, most merciful, we give thanks and praises to God Almighty, Lord of all the worlds, Master of the Day of Judgment. Thee do we worship, and thy aid we deceit. Show we the straight way, the way of those in the go astray. Amen. In some respects, it's a gentrification story. One group pushed out by a wealthier one. But given the land and people involved, a piece of American history is being lost. And when it's gone, it's gone. <laughs>